Morning guys, thought I'd do a bit of an update since I'm in sunny old UK. Um, it's been sunny since I got back. Um, but I've sort of left this video a few days out of frustration because I'm trying to keep the channel positive, but it's difficult with the stuff the government get up to. Um, now, I had no notifications about this red, green, make it up as you go along list um, prior to leaving Spain. It was literally couple of days before um, I was flying, because to be honest, people go, oh, why don't you keep up to date? Because they change it every day. <laughs> so I'm not interested, I'm not on holiday or traveling for the benefit of the state. I'm actually there to do my own stuff. I do not work for the government. I do not need to constantly be fed this garbage. Um, but basically, went on there, checked. Now, I, I knew I had to get tests for leaving the UK. Uh, uh, sorry, to fly back to the UK. Um, so that was already set. That's 110 euros. IMED is the company I use. Um, I find it very quick. Um, the woman was introduced. Out you go. She must have done about 20 people in about five minutes. Um, but then when you check the note, oh, you've got to have this day two test, the day eight test, and, and I'm like, what a farce. And it really, really is. And do you know why? I mean, from my, my personal view on this, is they want, they're so desperate for case numbers, they're trying to get extra cases. Because bear in mind, if you're sat at home in quarantine, I don't know if you've had COVID, if you have, when you ring them up, the advice is stay at home and quarantine. So if I'm already quarantined, why do I care? Yeah, you know, I know some of you guys um, have had COVID. I know some of you guys have had some serious issues with it. But guess what? If I've got serious issues with it, I don't need a bloody test shoved up my nose. Because at that point, I'm already ill. Um, so it's all very... I'll get one of the kits because I've got... So you get one of these little kits. Now I assume this comes from uh, one of friends of Boris or whoever. I don't just just being cynical. But the problem is I'm probably uh, correct, like the PPE stuff. Um, so this one comes in a little bag with a bag within a bag within a bag, um, and then it's just got like a, um, a little test tube type thing that you sh you know you stick the cotton bud up your nose, which is there. Shove it in there, and then there's a label that goes on the bag, that goes on here, that you keep a copy of. Um, and that's the process. Now, me, for, I, I do feel like I'm being robbed by this date, um, but I don't grumble too much because I'm still at work, and a lot of people aren't. But I still feel like I'm being robbed. Um, so that's the first bit. Now I've got to admit, there's a one of my contractors was going on holiday uh, to Egypt, and he rang me because we were talking about something else, and I mentioned about the extra tests. Um, he wasn't even aware of it, so I said, "No, no, no! You've got to have these other tests when you come back as well." I said, "But don't rush because you can sort that out when you get out there." Because um, he was out there for a fortnight. Although I have heard Portugal. Thanks to good old UK, um, not giving any notice. People have now got stuck there because they can't get tests because there's a four. I think it's a four day delay. So if you're due to fly back just after the the, the notice change, you're stuffed because you can't get a test. Because when you're sitting as an MP, the one thing you do not care about is these minions that are the ones that vote you in. And I'm not recommending people to vote all these people out at the next election. Um, <laughs> But the point being is, um, so he then had to organise it because we were talking about they've gone to the holiday flights because he knew I was flying back and he was flying out the same day. Um, and they'd cancelled, his flight had been cancelled, they hadn't told him, so I had to reschedule the flight and had all that hassle. And then I spoke to him on Friday. I believe it was Friday when it went to red notice for Egypt. So he's on the plane. And there's mumblings because he haven't took off yet. And he's like, I've got to get off the plane. 
I can't afford for him and his missus to be paying nearly two grand each for a hotel. Bit more government money in somebody's pocket. Um, so the master speak to the pilot, and the pilot says, "Look, I can't give you an official answer, um, but I do get the feeling we are going to be on the red notes before we land." At which point, you know, uh, the pilot says, "You can go off if you want." And he let a few people know on the way out, and about 30 people left the plane. Because bearing in mind, if you're there with your, your kids, and it's all like, oh, well, maybe your kids don't have to quarantine. Right, who's going to look after them? <laughs> you know, it's just, we are absolutely being robbed blind by this government. Um, now, you think I'm being a bit cynical, maybe I'm over frustrated with it but when i think it's five to ten million people can't get appointments for proper surgical operations and proper medical care um because of the covid situation now the covid situation if you remember right it was mortality rate mortality rate mortality rate mortality rate in case it was a sort down here sort of secondary now it's like this because i think the k the number of deaths is probably half a person or a third of a person a day um and it's like case numbers, case numbers, case numbers, which is why I think we get these things because they've now got all this extra testing. Well, guess what? You test more, you find more. But that's the end of. But it's this is where it get actually may be funny. Um, so I've had track and trace ringing me about this. Have you received it? Who did you order it from? And I'm going, don't you work for the government? I fill the information in Gov UK website. They've got the information. Why have you not got it? Oh yes, but um, um, yeah. So they go, okay. Well, we'll ring you. You know, you've got the you've got the kit, and it's like, yeah, and we'll ring you in a couple of days for your test results. And I'm like, why haven't you got them? Don't you work for the NHS? Um, yeah, I can understand your frustration. No, you don't understand my frustration, because if I legally do not have to tell you, I will not, because that's private information. And I know some of you guys, well, that's, you know, no, it's not. If this has been outsourced to a private entity, you have got no control of your data. But on top of that, I'm not helping fa feed into this um, false uh, scaremongery uh, beast that I see it as. Now, that's my personal opinion. I, d I do think it's been oversold. I think that we're being lied to. And I do think um, we're getting this big negative thing, push you down, keep scaremongering. Because I, I get the odd person complaining at me, going, well, you should just do as you're told. Yes. I'm sure Gorbel said exactly the same. Um, you can't. If you do, you're, t you're not just changing this. Look at old weapons of mass destruction and the regulations and law changes off the back of that. What do you think is going on at the minute? Because you only see the bits on the front. I mean, originally I think all the fines and that stuff weren't actually law, but are they law now? A lot of it, I would probably struggle to find the facts because it's pushed as being legal, but it, some of it may not be yet. So... The only thing that, for me that's been damaged in this whole situation is people's trust. Uh, sorry, not not what I'm talking about as an individual, because obviously the economy, people's wages, mortgages, the good chance of a housing crash, all that sort of stuff is possible. But what I'm saying is for the, the long term, the trust is the biggest thing that has been destroyed. Um, I have zero trust in Brett, Boris. Um, I think he's corrupt. I think he's untrustworthy. I think you could buy him. Um, and all the scandal stuff that's been going on with him. And it's just like that. Just doesn't care. In my personal opinion. Because he knows he's going to get away with it. He'll walk away with it. Make himself a millionaire, etc. And he'll just be... Because so, there's a lot of things that go on that... Are within... The rules. Now, my point within using the rules, which is what the the normally get used when they get called for something, why are we using rules and not laws and legislation? 
why aren't we doing things around ethics and, you know, criminal activity? <laughs> um, but it doesn't. It goes, oh, we'll investigate ourselves because Jeeves, I went to university with, uh, and um, he, he will investigate me. And I feel comfortable knowing that he's not going to find anything because we're best friends. It's, that's what seems to go on, in my personal opinion. Um, as such, nobody ever gets prosecuted. It's like, um, it just reminds me of an Italian government in the 90s. I used to watch things on, um, you know, it's, it's just bizarre. And the funny thing is, the suppression on media now makes it very difficult for things to be vocal and visual because the, the little hubs of community, um, like your pubs, your pubs and working men clubs and all that, it's been eroded because that was a way, that, there were hub networks throughout the UK. They were like the old internet. So they were all interwoven. Joe Bloggs goes to the, he drives a truck between two workmen's clubs. So information and stuff can get passed between people quite easily for things like protesting. Um, people discussing things freely. Now you're monitored. Um, because you do it on Facebook. You do it on Twitter. You do it on, and you, you post it like, oh, this is a place to, you know, talk. And it's been monitored, it's been filtered. Um, what's his name? Uh, is it Cambridge or Oxford Analytica? Whichever one it is. They look at that type of stuff and they go, oh, he doesn't like them, she doesn't like those. And they start to steer information in your direction. That's how you can win modern elections because you can manipulate them. Um, there is a documentary on Channel 4 called The Making of Boris, which, because um, I believe Boris's real name is Alexander. I mean, there's, there's a point of trust at that point. It doesn't even use his own name. Um, but the point being is, watch it, because it's exactly what I see what's happened with how he got elected. Um Getting back to these test kits. So yeah, like I said, they were phoning me up and saying, can I give them my test results? No, I don't know who you are. You're just phoning me up randomly. Oh, we're from Track and Trace. I think the website said I had to have a test day two and eight. Didn't say I had to give my results freely to somebody just randomly rings me up. Um, so I'm gonna look into that one because quite simply, I dis completely disagree. And this is why, because they go, they just keep taking. And it's, and the thing for me is that I'm not overly political. I can't be because of the type of work I do. But it erodes at rights and rights owned on the back of the dead. You look at the shift after World War One and World War Two in the political situation in the UK and how those wars relate to the individuals. They were paid for in blood. And we sit here going, well, the government says that it must be true and we must just do as we're told. But if you look into it in a much deeper level, no, you don't. That's... It's like when they go, it's law, it's law, and then you get, you'll see media from another side going, it's not law. Well, the thing is, those political people pushing it that it is law should be prosecuted for lying. Um, but my personal view is, I don't think the two or eight day test is required. I think you only need one in day eight, be quarantined anyway. Don't worry about it, because if you, oh, day two, if day two you got COVID, then you don't need to take test a day eight to get a refund. Of course you don't. But the point is, like I said to them, because this, this is the this is what the ice on the cake. So <clears throat> they go to me, you'll get your test results within like uh, 24 or 48 hours once it's gone through the lab and we want, you know, you'll get your test results. I said, I don't need them. Well, well, I don't need the results, so I'm, I'm not going to bother with them. I, 
I don't understand. I am already in quarantine, right? So I'm not going anywhere. Why the hell do I care if I've got it or not? Because I don't need somebody to go, you've got it. And uh, okay, what's the advice? Go into quarantine. I'm already in quarantine because I've got it and got no symptoms and nothing and it's going to expire because it must expire in those 10 days surely um, otherwise the quarantine period is wrong then by the time I come out of quarantine I haven't got it anymore I've had it but no longer got it yeah but we want your results well I don't care what well, we want to monitor it. Yeah, you do want to monitor it. But you didn't pay for this service. I did. And it's a medical procedure, which is mine. If you want, if you want to buy the results for me, fair enough. Pay for the test kit. But yeah, I know it sounds a bit awkward. It's not being awkward. It's because we're just being dictated to. You do that. Give us your money. We'll change it when it suits us. Um, and I can afford it. This is the this why some of you might be a bit irritated, irritated by me. I can afford it, but so many other people can't. And those ones that got shafted in Portugal where they changed the, the rules overnight, those are the ones that I'm concerned about. Those are the ones that I'm really peeved with the government about. Because as far as I'm concerned, if you went on holiday and it was on the green notice and you come when you, it goes to red notice, guess what? You still come back on the green notice. As long as you booked it, you know, two, three weeks before the, the rules changed, you should be taking on those rules. And what about infection rates? I don't care about infection rates. Um, the mortality rates are the one I'm interested in. The fact that we're getting more people infected according to the government, and then they come up with the Thai version, the Indian version, the Mars version, the, you know, variants are normal. But the but even now I was listening to the news today. They're saying, "Oh, yes, but um, the new version's affecting younger people, but they're not getting as ill in hospital. So you're saying they're less likely to die, which means the critical part of this has changed. We're not on the end of the world. We're now sort of." We've got to manage it. Well, managing that is also recognising the mortality rates nearly dropped to zero. Um, on most days, it has. Um, so at that point, you have to say, right, what about heart disease? What about uh, cancer treatments? What about all these other people that are not... As far as I can see, in my personal opinion, and from what I've been told, because obviously we did get... Stats seem to have just vanished everyone's been cured for the last year um, what's the death rates on all this stuff or is everything just COVID we just go oh he fell out of bed and banged his head on the floor and he's dead oh COVID there's something just just not right about the whole thing and the way you've had Bill Gates and other people involved I'm not a conspiracy theorist by the way but the the antitrust stuff around Bill Gates just says he is not a guy I can trust and then the way the current government has been caught in so many things from wallpaper to PPE to obviously test kits I assume without well, come out next month um, but they're just sitting there laughing at us we're just going you just pay it couldn't care less about you bloody minions um, yeah but anyway We'll see what the next month brings. But I do see a lot more rumbling from people and grumblings that they're getting fed up with it um, because there doesn't seem to be a real end in sight. It just seems to be, let's see how much we can milk it for, in my personal opinion. Let's see how much money we can make out of this for ourselves. Oh, Brexit. <laughs> I'll finish off on Brexit. So I've got a load of construction projects on and I'm involved with a lot of other people in the businesses that are building schools, um, got big supply and procurement issues. 
Uh, Travis Perkins got no sand cement. What was the other one the other day? They were one of my contractors went in for something else. Oh, they've got no posts. They've got no timber, no cement, no sand, and there seems to be no delivery dates. Now, randomly enough, because obviously when you have this test and you're in quarantine, can't leave the house, you've you've got to go and post your kits. Now, I'm lucky enough to just have a post box here, so I literally just went out and posted it. But I bumped into um, a guy from the old house I was renting, and he was just telling me that he's working with the um, customs. And he was saying how much hassle it is. He says, because it's an absolute mess, because a lot of this stuff was not agreed long in advance this is the message that we get what happened is the one day boris just went right it's changing overnight and at that point that's when it started it wasn't done two years in advance or any of that that's just nonsense and these are people that work in customs so it's not a case of i trust their word over boris's because they do it it's their job so when you've got a pen i've got a pen in front of me so when you've got a pen You've got to put what that plastic is, what the ink is, what the little nib is. So there's about five documents for a pen. Then you've got the other side of this that weights and measures have changed. So the paperwork's wrong. So there's an entire department dealing with measurements and weights. You know, because I assume we've gone back to points, kilos, and from kilos to tonnage or whatever. I don't know why, because if it was already set up, why bother? You know, if we already went through that transition, why do you want to go that far back? Shouldn't you actually go through the same process of when it went that way? To say, we're already using kilos, so let's keep it for kilos for now. And we can discuss whether we want it or not. Nah, scrap all that, let's go back to old England. It reminds me of the Dark Ages after the Romans retracted. Um, so it's in absolute turmoil. Now, I know uh, in Spain, there's uh, Iceland overseas, and I know they put out a statement a while back that it's taking 23 days for trucks to get from um, the UK to Spain, um, thanks, thanks to all this sort of stuff. So, don't think the Brexit's resolved either. That's going to be ongoing for the next few years, at least. <coughs> Then you've got the other side of it. There's a lot of people got problems with things like driving licenses, because because um, it won't just be Spain; it'll be people all over Europe. So I have no idea how many people are affected by this, but it's obviously something you don't really uh, tell too many people about that these issues are occurring. So you can't change your driving license. Why? Because, for example, Spain, although you may be in the Spanish system. They're not recognising the status of the licence because the UK hasn't decided what it's doing yet. So if it's on par with the Spanish one, normally you could just change it because it's an EU licence. Currently, there's a few people I know, can't get a new licence. Because although they're in Spain and need a Spanish one because that's the Spanish regulations, they don't know what the UK licence has been recognised as. Because they didn't even have the foresight to sort of say, right, this rule needs to stay in long term because the standard in the UK is actually higher than some of these other countries. Um, and I know I'll get, I'll get flat from some of the Spaniards going, oh, blah, blah, blah. And I've got a Filipino license, I can change to a Spanish one. So what I'm saying is it's not just a Spanish license because I know in Spain there's a lot more um, bits and pieces to the test than when I did my original test because the UK may be much more difficult now than it was when I took my test on a while ago um, over 20 years ago so so the point being is but the Philippine one I, I basically got on a motorbike rode in a straight line come back and I passed my test so that, that was my Filipino driving license um, so the point being is there's loads of bureaucracy everywhere and what I'm finding is there's been a lot of anti-Europe stuff 
from people complaining, oh, it's the French, it's this. Everyone else is still in the same group. Everyone else is part of the EU. So it's all right blaming them, but they haven't changed anything. The UK has still been deciding what it wants to do, and then they have to have the meetings around the bureaucracy, because I'm sure 90% of it, if they actually spend a bit of time saying, keep that the same, keep that the same, keep that the same, keep that the same, it makes life easier for everybody. Now, don't get me wrong, bureaucrats thrive on this stuff, um, but logically, that would have made more sense. But at the moment, a lot of this stuff is still in limbo, and will be in limbo for some time. So, fully understand people's frustrations. But, hey ho, it's the world we're in, and let's just keep to the positive stuff. So I thought I'd just have this little bit of a rant today, and then I hopefully won't be discussing it again. But I do think we're absolutely getting fleeced. Alright, thanks for watching.